Hey, how's it going? It's Matt Haynes, and today I'm going to review this, the Movo VXR10 Pro. It's a microphone. I haven't opened it yet, though. So before I get into a review, we gotta get we gotta get into this thing. Let's open it up. It's got a case. Paperwork, sticker, other sticker, no. Happy, not happy. What am I supposed to do with that? All right, how do you feel about cases? I mean, does it need a case? It's a, well, I think it's a little tiny microphone. Does it need this giant case? Would you use a case like this? Will I use a case like this? I don't know. Ah, it's got that new case smell. We have some cables. So we've got uh, basically, cell phone with uh, headphones and microphone connection and then we've got a standard uh, stereo connection that can go into a camera for a mini jack and of course we have the silica gel we don't need this now this is the microphone mount it's a rycoat and they make a big deal about that rycoat being a separate company we'll see how that works later dead kitty all right dead cat not a dead kitty dead cat it's kind of shedding like real cats I wonder if real dead cats shed. Finally, the microphone. It comes with a pop filter, and here's the actual microphone. Now I've seen mention of this before. It's got uh, a line out, well it's actually a microphone out, and it's got a headphone jack as well, but the headphone jack isn't for monitoring, it's really just for playing back if you're hooked into a phone. So it's basically kind of like if you had headphones and a microphone, It's it's, so you can play things back. It's like a pass-through, but you have to be able to either hit play on your phone or you need uh, an app that will uh, pass through the audio. It's a nice looking microphone. It's solid, it's metal. Even though it's pretty tiny, it's, it feels substantial. So I'll be interested to hear what this sounds like. It is not easy getting the microphone into the shock mount and I'm a little worried that I'm going to break it or the mic microphone will go flying across the room. Okay, that's an issue. Well, I've been working at it for about 30 seconds and I still haven't managed to get the microphone into the shock mount. So I'm going to work on that off camera and see if I can figure it out. Okay, I finally got it in the shock mount. Uh, it was it was kind of a challenge and I was afraid I was gonna break it, but I didn't. One, I guess one thing to consider is that once you've got it in the shock mount, you probably won't take it out because there's no other way to mount this microphone. This this is the way you mount it. You've got a, a cold shoe mount here and with a, a quarter 20 screw mount there. So you can put it on a tripod, you can put it on a light stand, you can put it on a boom mount, you can put it on the top of your camera. Once it's in there, I guess we just leave it in there. That's kind of cool. This is what it looks like with the pop filter on it. And then the dead cat goes over that, which I always found odd. It's like wearing two sets of socks. That's the finished, uh, that's the whole, that's as involved as it gets. It's fully dressed. You know what this review needs? Needs some B-roll. So I'm taking a bit of a chance here because uh, I'm just going for a hike and uh, using using the Movo mic and hoping that uh, the wind rejection is pretty decent. It was really windy earlier, but it's uh, wind has died down a little bit, but we're getting some wind here. So I'm gonna just uh, check my app, see what the wind speed is. All right, it says uh, 
four miles an hour with uh, nine mile an hour gusts. That doesn't sound too bad. I can see on the meters, the audio meters, that uh, there's some wind noise being picked up. But of course I can't hear it right now, so I'll know when I get back. Just so you can get a sense of uh, how far I am away from the microphone, this is uh, basically how far. It's maybe two feet, uh, arm's length. I have this on a uh, essentially a monopod to help uh, stabilize it and also so I can set it up from place to place. Now the specs on this are interesting because if you see the frequency response curve there, there's a definite roll off in the low end. And uh, then it's kind of peaky in the high end. You see that a lot with microphones. Um, but that low end, you can hear it, I think. Um, it's not so bad that you couldn't adjust it in, uh, in post. You could just uh, give it a little boost in the low end if you needed. Um, I think that's probably a function of how small the microphone is. Uh, it just doesn't have a very big diaphragm and it's also got a very short um, baffle for the shotgun. So it's workable, but it's just something to keep in mind. So the Movo has that low end roll off on its frequency response, but it also doesn't have a low cut switch. A lot of microphones you'll see will have a switch where you can roll off the low end if you're getting a lot of wind noise. So you don't have those options here. I have a cheaper mic that has a low end roll off, so I don't think it's a question of cost. It's probably a question of size and or um, the fact that it's not powered because the Movo does not require a battery. That's a good thing and a bad thing. A battery powered microphone can give you a better frequency response sometimes. It can also give you a louder signal. Uh, nonetheless, the signal on this, I'm just looking at the meter there, the signal on this seems pretty good for an unpowered microphone. The sun is going down and the wind is starting to pick up, so this might be a good time to compare the uh, microphone with the dead cat on versus the dead cat off and so there's a breeze blowing here but uh, it's not too strong it's, it rumbles in my ears a little bit i can see it on the meters there all right let's take this dead cat off all right now we're doing the same check here how's the wind response let's go for a walk shall we should be getting a better sense of the wind right now all right, I'm getting a lot of uh, wind noise from looking at the meter. It's peaking into the red, so I think it's time to put the dead cat back on. Oh, there's a bike coming. I better move. Hi. A lot of bikes coming through. Hi. Man, I really hope this dead cat is doing its job, because otherwise this, uh, this will have been a wasted recording. It's uh, picking up. It's pretty breezy. A couple of months ago I was on these trails and came right before sunset, and I got turned around and ended, ending up going way up there, somewhere, and uh, got lost, and then and, which is weird because I know these trails pretty well, but it, took, it got dark and I came down in the dark and then I was worried they were going to close the gates at the front so I was actually running in the dark with my phone flashlight and uh, it was a wonder I didn't twist my ankle. So I am trying to be aware of the light or the lack of light and uh, try and get back to the parking lot. So I think, I think it's this way. So coming back from the uh, field test, my biggest takeaway was the uh, amazing job that the Movo VXR10 Pro, it did a great job um, cutting that wind noise. That dead cat does a great job. And it wasn't obvious at first as you were watching the video back and then I take that uh, dead cat off and you can really hear how the camera's limiter is fighting that uh, the volume, that low level rumble from the wind and it just ruined the audio. So dead cat for the wind for sure. Now the frequency response of the microphone I could notice was a little bit thin. In other words, the low end wasn't quite as apparent as some microphones. And that's because of that, that frequency response low end roll off that the microphone has. Uh, it would be nice to have a roll off switch and so you had a choice in the matter, but it's a tiny microphone. And so, you know, they, they just don't have the space, I'm sure, to put on a switch and put in the electronics for that price. Now, this microphone is really intended to 
be a voice microphone. It's meant to be mounted on a camera and just record voice. So with that, that if you're outdoors and that's what you're recording, that roll off is probably helping you. However, if you are recording like sound effects or Foley or environmental noises, something like that, then, or even indoors where you might want the choice of a roll off, this microphone doesn't do that. But again, that's not really the purpose of this microphone. So you might be asking yourself, why use an external microphone at all? After all, your camera has a built-in microphone. Isn't that good enough? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Now, the, the difference, of course, is that this is a shotgun microphone and it's very sort of laser focused on whatever it's pointing at. However, your in-camera microphone is probably an omnidirectional microphone, which means it picks up sound from all directions about the same volume. If you have noises behind you, they're gonna be just as loud as noises in front of you. Now, if you need that because you're talking to the camera from behind the camera, then that's one thing. But if you're really trying to cut down on all that extraneous noise, then a shotgun microphone is really useful. And indoors, Omnidirectional microphones can become a little bit of a problem because they are picking up sound from all directions. They're more likely to pick up reflections in your room. So you don't just have the direct sound going into the microphone, but you have the sound that's bouncing off the walls coming into the back of the microphone. It sounds a little bit more reverberant. It sounds a little bit more live. Uh, but it can also make your audio recordings very muddy if you're getting all this bouncing sound, especially if you're in a small room like an office or you know a, a room in a house or a small studio, things like that. So having an omnidirectional microphone can hurt you. Now, I'm also recording this right now with an omnidirectional microphone. This is uh, a USB microphone plugged directly into my computer. And so we can hear the difference between the two microphones. Now, don't just listen to the frequency response or the volume. I'm, you know, I balance the volume as best I can, but that's not what we're listening for. Listen to the sound in between what I'm saying. In other words, listen for the echoes, listen for, does it sound like I'm close to the microphone? Does it sound like I'm further away from the microphone? And that's, that's that room sound. And the omnidirectional microphone is picking up more of that room sound. I'm gonna show you how the volume doesn't change that much depending on which way the microphone is pointing. So there's gonna be a little bit of handling noise here as I rotate things. But this is, I'm speaking directly to the microphone and uh, let's see, I need a, um, a, a test phrase just for testing this. Um, hey, like and subscribe to my channel. That's pretty good, huh? Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees off axis. Okay, this is 90 degrees off axis. Like and subscribe to my channel. Now this is facing completely away. Like and subscribe to my channel. And all the way around 270 degrees. Like and subscribe to my channel. So you see how the volume doesn't change that much? Now we're gonna do the same thing with the Movo VXR10 Pro. Did I get that right? Yes, I got that right. Movo VXR10 Pro. <laughs> Okay, so this is gonna be, again, more, more handling noise. This is directly into the microphone. Now I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees off axis. And, oh, first of all, the catchphrase, like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, this is 90 degrees off axis. Like and subscribe to my channel. I gotta come off camera here. This is, this is exactly 180 degrees off axis. Like and subscribe to my channel. And almost all the way around, like and subscribe to my channel. So I think you can hear the difference quite dramatically there, that the off-axis response is a lot less in terms of volume and also in terms of frequency response, it does change quite a bit too. So just having that directionality in a microphone is really useful. When I compared the Movo VXR10 Pro to another shotgun microphone I often use in the field, uh, I found that the Movo didn't have quite the sharp shotgun pattern that the other microphone did. Now, to be fair, the other microphone that I was using was about that long with a shotgun microphone. It was the same same purpose as this. It was on camera, it was very directional, it was meant for vlogging and things like that. But it seemed to do a better job rejecting uh, side and rear sounds coming into the microphone. And I think really that's just 
because of the size. The Movo is so short that 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 barrel of the microphone, the baffle, that's it's got little holes in it that, that helps reject sound. The baffle is just very short. And so I think it doesn't have quite the strong hypercardioid pattern that um, other microphones have. Is that a problem? I don't think so. All right, now there's some, there's some warnings though I need to give you about this microphone or maybe not this microphone, but this style of microphone. So I guess it's not really the Movo VXR10 Pro that is the problem by itself. It's just the concept can be a problem. Now the audio connections on this microphone are definitely not professional. It is, the, the only output on it is a TRRS or tip ring ring sleeve uh, connector for with a, a mini jack. That's essentially the connection you use for headphones that have a microphone. So think plugging headphones into your cell phone. That's not terribly professional. And that semi-professional output on the microphone is really frustrating because I had hoped to record everything on a digital audio recorder and plug it into the balanced inputs here just so I had a consistency with all my testing. And I tried a number of different connections, cables and adapters and stuff like that. And I just could not get something that worked so I could get a signal from this microphone into an external recorder. The only thing I can plug it into is either my phone or my camera. Not a problem if that's the purpose you're using it for, but it does limit the use. Like if you thought, you know what? This microphone would sound really good to record some Foley or for, for some sound effects. You're gonna have trouble because you're not gonna be able to connect it to anything in a professional way. And one other problem I ran into was using this microphone with your cell phone. Again, this isn't the microphone's problem. It's not Movo's problem, but the way they talk about it in the marketing, they don't really mention this problem. And the problem is you don't wanna use it with an iPhone. Okay, the reason why you don't want to use it with an iPhone, or at least a newer iPhone, is because the plug into an iPhone, the lightning port, is actually kind of garbage. I have had so many problems with the lightning port on iPhones from, you know, the, the 7 up until now, and uh, they just wear out. As soon as I plugged in an adapter to go from the... Uh, TRRS cable to the lightning to plug in my phone, I get a really intermittent connection. I think plugging something into that port is going to be a problem and you're gonna wear it out even faster if you do a lot of recording. It probably works fine on, on an Android phone or other things like that. You can use a, a USB-C connector or whatever. But connecting to the lightning port, I think is a bad idea. I'm not, I'm never gonna use this with my phone. If I were you, I would find a Bluetooth solution to a microphone if you're gonna use the iPhone, uh, just so you can avoid ruining your phone eventually. When I was out in the field, did you notice that clicking noise? It was kind of a clackety, plasticky noise as I was walking. Uh, when I got back to the studio and listened to it, I was like, oh my God, what, what is that noise? That was just very disconcerting. So I investigated different things. It, was it something on my backpack? It, was it something about the, the monopod I was using? Turns out the noise was coming from the microphone. But again, this wasn't the microphone's fault. The cables that come with the microphone are quite long, and that's a good thing because, you know, better to have a long microphone cable than a short microphone cable. However, when I plugged it from the microphone into my camera, it was so long, it was hanging down in front of the, the view screen. So what I did is I just tucked the cable into the shock mount, right? About there, something like that, just to keep it out of the way. That was a bad idea because anything touching the shock mount is going to make a noise. And basically it was the cable kind of bouncing around as I was walking, making a tick, tick, tick noise that was getting into the microphone. I tested it later, you know, played around with it, and I was able to replicate it with the cable tucked like that. It makes a noise, but if you let the cable hang loosely, it's fine. So the shock mount is doing its job. It's just knucklehead here, not really following instructions. Uh, not only is the shock mount not making the weird noise I thought it was, it's, uh, it's better than the other shock mount I have. So well worth it to have that shock mount. All right, so this is probably what you've been waiting for. Would I recommend this microphone to you? 
If you're using this microphone on a phone, especially an iPhone, then no. I think that would be a problem over the long term. If you're intending to use this microphone for things like recording sound effects or studio work or indoor work or or things like that, you're probably going to have connection problems that will drive you nuts. So I would not recommend it under those conditions. However, if you are using this microphone for its intended purpose, which is to put on a camera, if you're using it for on-camera work and you're recording voices, whether it's your own voice for like vlogging or you're recording someone else for a documentary, something like that, then yeah, yeah, I would recommend it because it sounds really nice. Uh, doesn't require batteries or power. It's tiny so and it's also light so it's easy to carry you don't feel it when you put it on your camera the shock mount works really well and uh, the dead cat really just cuts down on wind noise it just did an awesome job and the movo vxr 10 pro is 50 bucks you can't go wrong there and it's super cute too. This video up right up here, I think you might like that if you like camera stuff because it's a tutorial on how to make your own lens flares and film light leaks. It doesn't cost you any money either, so check it out. Music